Galia Soul Level 125 Build Showcase, a build exploiting Vitality Gouging with Unreal Damage Output. 88 Vitality will make you one of the highest HPs in any matchup, allowing plenty of hits to be taken. 15 Intelligence to get 100 MP in order to cast Second Chance, 33 Endurance is plenty of stamina to tank hits while blocking and rolling around, 20 Strength in order to one-hand the NR, 14 Dexterity for the NR, 12 Magic for the NR, 16 Faith in order to cast Second Chance. Many players will make builds that use the Northern Regalia, however most won't efficiently take advantage of the true power this weapon allows. Typically, they add a Northern Regalia to a different build, not dedicating the build to the Northern Regalia, in order for a variety of weapons and tactics. Why use other weapons when the NR gives you everything you need? Insane neutral hit damage, highest critical damage in the game, unreal HP pool, speed, range, and turtling options. There is never a moment when you aren't a threat using the Northern Regalia. You will primarily use the Northern Regalia, however, supportive weapons may include the Makoto, the Baby's Nail. You should have the three commonly used PvP shields ready for equipping, the Knight Shield, the Dark Silver Shield, and the Educator Shield. I also like to include the Brushwood Shield to neutralize Fire Spraying Mages. Always have Second Chance, but you may also include Death Cloud or Warding for supportive spells. The Northern Regalia is in the Large Sword Weapon Class category. I personally rank this weapon class as level S, meaning best in PvP. The Northern Regalia and the Claymore being the top spots, they are some of the best weapons that Demon Souls has to offer for PvP. The Northern Regalia has very low stat requirements for a weapon that does some of the most damage in the game. This weapon is extremely broken at levels underneath 90, often one or two hits killing people. But we aren't here to talk about the low level PvP, let's go back to the 125. As all large swords, the two-handed playstyle allows for very quick R1 attacks while having great range, including roll catching extension range. Not to mention, these large swords are fantastic for dead angling shielding turtles. So if someone is in your face with a shield and you can't seem to break their shield, their, their defense, it's very easy to perform a dead angle with minimal risk to get past that shield. However, when using the Northern Regalia, the best approach is to look for criticals and play defensively with a shield. This means you will have the Northern Regalia one-handed and a shield up majority of the time, also known as crit fishing. This playstyle may be a bit more boring compared to the aggressive assault many dexterity build users prefer, but this allows the Northern Regalia user total control of the battlefield. As the commander of the fight, you dictate the flow and tempo as you wish. If an opponent tries to take that control, you are set up to punish them. If they are aggressively attacking you, you're in a great position to parry their attacks. If they are fishing for a backstab, you utilize the forward movement and punish them with your own backstab, or set up a fake backstab attempt to pull back and parry their missed backstab, aka the fistal parry. If an opponent plays defensively, you have a big advantage to pressure them and punish panic rolls or panic attacks. If they are shielding and retreating, you can pressure with dead angles and backstab threats. If someone is foolish enough to parry spam, you punish with a devastating backstab. In this clip here, you've been seeing some gameplay utilizing the aforementioned Northern Regalia tactics. The opponent and I have some enormous latency issues, as you can see, and the fight drags on, allowing heals or punishes that normally would or wouldn't work to occur. I am not holding back, and I'm using a variety of tactics to try and defeat this player including guaranteed wake-ups, which in this case aren't very guaranteed. When you're fighting someone, an opponent, with heavy latency, it completely changes how you use the build. Many tactics or timings with backstabs, parries, attacks won't actually connect as usual. Oftentimes you may have to attack or parry earlier or later than what the visual animation seems like. This is part of adapting to different levels of latency in PvP. You may have noticed but many builds rely on HP regeneration. This Northern Regalia build has such high HP that you don't worry about regenerating HP most of the time. However, if you would like to, you can quickly swap your shield to the Educator Shield and play the two-handed range style. This is not recommended for majority of the PvP fights utilizing this build. It may be annoying to deal with HP regeneration, especially in duels where no heals are allowed. However, this is a huge perk of using the Northern Regalia build. One backstab or repost will typically break their second chance or kill them. 
unless they have very high magic defense and high vitality. Think about high vitality faith builds. Um, it will take about 70 vitality or more to survive one of those backstabs from the Northern Regalia. This is referring to fighting a phantom, whether it's a blue or black phantom. If you're fighting a host, it may or may not one-shot them on the backstab, just kind of depends. But when you combine using the annoying guaranteed wake-ups, you will always break their second chance or kill them, even if they are a host while using the Northern Regalia. This is the unreal damage output I mentioned earlier. You probably noticed I'm wearing two different armor setups in all of these clips. I have my traditional Old King's armor with a leather cap style and a more modern Gloom helm with Gloom gauntlets and an Imperial spy body and leggings piece. Armor doesn't make a huge difference in reducing damage from one armor to the next. As long as you have a piece of armor for each slot, the head, chest, arms, and legs, you will be fine. However, with my old armor set, it gives good defenses with limited stamina penalty. Only the little penalty is due to the leather cap for some reason. But you know, whatever. Fashion. The newer set I wear has an increased stamina penalty due to the gloom helm and gauntlets, which honestly, I don't mind. I don't even notice the stamina penalty. But it does give good plague resistance for that gloom pieces. It can take six consecutive hits from the baby's nail before getting plagued. This won't stop a death cloud though, so be wary of that. However, any armor honestly will suffice as you can use a Widow's Lotus to stop being plagued. And finally, this toxic fight will come to an end and we can move on to more gameplay. Oftentimes you will mix in baits for your attacks. You should see me throwing in some baits in the different clips moving forward. Sometimes pretending like you are one spam while an opponent is safely far enough away to parry or punish you will make them feel that you're playing aggressively or just carelessly attacking. Other times you will roll excessively and make the opponent feel that they can punish you when in reality you are setting them up. Mixing up your tactics of attack, defense, and baits will really help open up opportunities when fighting your opponents. This holds true to all builds, not only the Northern Regalia. However, the Northern Regalia build is a bit more straightforward and not as versatile as many other builds may be. This means creating opportunities with baits is that much more important. Understanding which weapons your opponents are using will allow you to determine the best course of action with your Northern Regalia build. Are they using dual katanas or a two-handed curved sword? Are they using a great sword or a dragon bone smasher? All these will determine what course of action you should take. So if they're using a dex build with dual katanas, two-handed curved sword, something like that, they will probably be more aggressive and allow you to control the field by playing defensively and searching for a parry opening. If the opponent is using a great sword or dragon bone smasher, you may find the playstyle to be similar to your own Northern Regalia build playstyle. However, they will often utilize one-handed dash attacks, which you can either parry or roll backstab, or they'll throw in two-handed dash attacks that try to knock you back or dead angle. Watch out for the one-handed roll attack baits when an opponent is using a greatsword or dragon bone smasher. They will oftentimes roll back as you are aggressively approaching them and bait you with a one-handed roll attack which does have hyper armor. So also be careful not to become complacent while shielding with your NR build. Some weapons such as a claymore or their greatsword, dragon bone smasher, can dead angle attacks very easily and catch you off guard. This includes the dragon bone smasher, greatsword, one handed dash attack. As the commander of the field, you will look for your opponent's playstyle and start to read their patterns. You control the flow of the field, so there's no pressure to rush any decision. Reading patterns is important and will let you choose the right tactics versus an opponent. This is how you create openings to punish players. In the Northern Regalia, playstyle is all about punishing players. Thank you for watching my Northern Regalia build showcase. I hope you liked the build and the video. Please feel free to comment and let me know what your very own Northern Regalia build looks like. I went for an extremely high vitality build and it has been very successful for me in duels and invasions. Remember, never underestimate the Northern Regalia. I would give a the dedicated Northern Regalia builds the number three spot on the best builds in Demon Souls Remake PvP. Goodbye and take care.